not to. We have come to delete you. You mean some kind of cyber leader sort of deal thing, right? No. Our master is it. Our master. Something's not right here. Well, I hope I'm not too late for my obligatory camp e Oh. Cybermen? ex cybus yes. But I think someone's taking up control of the Siberia. Right? Whatever you call it. Who could have done that? I have my suspicions, but it's too uncertain. Not to. Before we delete you, answer us this. Why do you even bother doing a review show? You will not gain any popularity with such poor quality reviews of things with such niche fandoms. Why? Because I'm a highly opinionated, stubborn, and cynical. That's the perfect kind of person to make reviews, just like a nostalgia critic. Oh, but you won't be deleting me. Doctor, get back to your TARDIS. This is going to get a bit messy. I can't rightly agree with what you're planning. What, you expect them to surrender? I'm going back to the TARDIS, but only because I want to try something. Uh, I think I know what it is. Sure, I'll buy you some time. And there goes that plan. Still doing it. Try to avoid hurting the Cybermen. Those are probably just robots like the one you mentioned before. Good point. I'll do what I can. Mask. Change. Yokai. Two. I'm going to make this showy. There's a computer is that so? Meanwhile, I'm gonna let my subconscious take over the review. Uh, story writer, roll the, uh, you know. start the review, I just want to say that I just watch Adventures of Time and Space and I really need to give a special dedication not just to the man himself, William Hartnell, but to everyone who worked on this amazing show and made it the success it was and changed British programming forever. Um. To be honest, I don't really see the appeal in the Daleks in this particular serial. Now, it definitely deserves the recognition that it got. It was very well written, honestly. But the Daleks themselves, I, I honestly can't say that I, I saw any real appeal in them. I, I just didn't. But... I, I have to say though, it is amazing that this serial almost got the show cancelled right off the bat with the very second serial and 
You know what? I, I, I am simply amazed at how well they, they did this. And, you know, it's, it, it's amazing, this show. It, it's just not just a show. It is an experience. And I, 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 this is completely unscripted, by the way. And I apologize for taking this moment out of your time before the review, so... On with the reveal. My little darling, my little darling, da My little darling, we have come here to exterminate my little darling. Because the only thing we can feel is hate. But the doctor, he can't run, shooting our lasers one by one. We are here to exterminate. We will destroy the pony race. My little darling, don't you know you're all ex- With the 50th anniversary almost here and it being about the Time War and the Time War involving the Daleks, I thought it would be a good idea to discuss the Daleks, one of the two opposing forces of the Time War like I mentioned, and possibly the most iconic Doctor Who villains, even more than the Cybermen. Did you know that the Daleks were the earliest reoccurring villain in Doctor Who, or villains, appearing as early as the second serial? Well, I'm going to review that serial. The Cybermen wouldn't actually appear until the 29th serial, the Daleks having made a few more appearances leading up to the debut of the Cybermen. I previously said I'd only review one episode each, but the pacing just goes so slow in classic Doctor Who, I think I just might do a little bit more. So in this case, I'm just going to summarize most of the important details for the first couple episodes, because barely anything happens in them. So let's dig into the second Doctor Who serial ever, The Daleks. In the first episode, Susan's two teachers are still stuck with the Doctor after their first adventure together, and try to come to terms with the fact that they're still stuck with him, while exploring a strange planet with a petrified forest and a strangely perfectly intact city. The Doctor insists on exploring the city, and even perpetrates a clever lie that was revealed to be a lie in the second episode, though it's fairly obvious he just did it to get his way. For a guy so old, he really does act like a little kid, huh? Even back in this, in the first Doctor incarnation. He tried this. Oh, it's very nice. Let's hope it does you some good. K7. Ah, yes, of course, the fluid link. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yes, there we are. You see, the end of it's unscrewed itself and the fluid has run out. Well, have you got a spare? Oh, no, no need for that. This is easily repaired. All we have to do is refill it. Oh, what uh, liquid do you need? Mercury. Mercury? Oh, can I get it for you? No, I'm afraid you can't. We haven't any at all. What? No. Uh, Don't you carry a supply? No, it hasn't been necessary. This hasn't happened before. But you must have some somewhere, surely. No, no, we shall have to get some from outside. Remember rule number yeah. one? The Doctor lies. He does this, however, not aware that the radiation levels on the planet are actually off the charts. Ian agrees to go to explore the city come sunrise, left without any choice. They eventually explore the city and they split up. Oh my god, bad idea. Doctor and Susan discover a Greiger counter that tells them that the radiation levels are way high, while Barbara fails to notice several doors closing behind her. Seriously, how did she even not notice that? The episode ends with her being captured by a Dalek, no less. In the second episode, Dr. Ian and Susan are also eventually captured while looking for Barbara, and they find out they're suffering from radiation sickness due to nuclear fallout from a bomb that targets flesh and organic material, but not inorganic material. As well as the fact that the Daleks have been fighting a war with the other natives of the planet. Yes, this is in fact Scaro. The architecture might be a little bit familiar to some fans of the reboot version, especially if you played the Doctor Who Adventures games. 
It's also revealed that the other race of Skaro, the potentially mutated Thals, have created a medicine to cure the radiation sickness, and in the case for containing some, has been brought into the TARDIS in the previous episode. Ian's leg was stunned because the Daleks actually used the stun setting for their weapons back then, and was the Doctor feeling the full effects of the radiation sickness and Susan being the only one left who could possibly open the TARDIS aside from the Doctor, Susan has to go get the medicine from the TARDIS herself. In spite of the possibility of possibly getting attacked by the Thals, or even coming into contact with them, which would be bad for the Daleks. Both the heroes and the Daleks need the medicine, so both sides are kind of taking a huge risk here. However, they don't know the truth about Falls. Susan stumbles through the petrified forest as a storm seems to be going on and manages to get out of TARDIS and retrieve the medicine, ending the episode. The third episode starts right where the previous episode left off. As Susan is leaving the TARDIS, she's frightened by thunder again and then sees a fall, more scared of the fall than the thunder. In spite of it not seeming to be mutated like the Daleks said. Susan asks what the foe wants, and he tells her to not be afraid. Dude, she's obviously encountered the Daleks first, and she was probably lied to. Susan realizes that he doesn't appear to be mutated. Wait, you got a pretty good look at the guy already. I think you could have figured that out by now. The foe has reveal reveals that he has accidentally spooked Susan in the first episode. It was the one who had left drugs behind and that there is a certain way to use to them, so that's not really today, brought I up. The Thal tells Susan the possibility that the Daleks yeah, might want the drugs for themselves and probably won't I'm give our heroes any. The Thal gives Susan day. another case of the drugs to her, her to hide and reveals his name is Aladon. After Susan returns, the Daleks suspect that she has made contact with the Thals as they found the second case, but for some reason actually let her keep it. After distributing the medicine and some water and some idle chatter, Susan says she wants to help the Thals, as they will starve if they don't find food. The Thals want to make a peace treaty with the Daleks, but the Daleks plot to kill the Thals when they arrive. The Daleks try to give their prisoners a false sense of security by being hospitable to them. The Daleks then send Susan to write a message to the Thals. Meanwhile, the Thals talk about how they used to be warriors but are now farmers, while in contrast they think the Daleks were pacifistic philosophers and teachers but are now possibly warriors. It's not mentioned here, but the Thals have actually confused the Daleks' ancestors, the Khaleds, with the Dolls. D-A-L, not T-H, like the Thals. Dolls. It's says because the Davros, who created the Daleks, named them after the last word of the Dal Book of Prophecies, which is pronounced dal ek in the Dal language, something that was only revealed in an audio story. Although the fact that the Thals confused the Daleks with the Dolls was actually revealed in a later uh, um, serial. There's a bit of tension between Eladon and his fiance, who seems to be, be uh, enjoy posing suggestively because he was talking to Susan and they figured that Eladon might have taken personal interest in her as she was around the same age apparently. Actually, I'm not sure if that was Eladon's fiance was posing suggestively next to the TARDIS or not. The souls all seem to look alike. And considering they're all blonde, I don't think color television would have helped much. The fall woman also happened to have the exact same kind of tiny crown cream chrysalis has. Weird. The Doctor, Susan, Ian, and Barbara noticed the security camera in their cell and faked an argument to break the camera. 
The Daleks, however, are not fooled by this weak argument because the camera is securely wired into the wall and it could have accidentally been broken, but they are confident it was a futile effort. The Doctor realizes that the Daleks are powered by static electricity by rubbing the bottom of their travel machines against the floor, and Ian realizes that the cloak Aladon gave Susan is good for insulation. The whole the reader rambles more about how he believes the Daleks are going to help them in spite of Aladon's protests, but it is thankfully interrupted by another Thal who discovered Susan's message outside the city. Ian jams the door with the broken camera. Barbara puts a mud ball under the food supplying Daleks' eye stock, allowing them to put it on the cloak and deactivate it. Ian and Barbara open the lid of the casing and Ian goes inside. Boy, how was it looking before if there actually wasn't a Dalek inside of it? The episode ends with them pushing Ian inside of the travel machine, which is incredibly suspicious, but the doctor who's supposed to be the smart one says it'll be fine. Once again, the next episode starts where the last one left off, and oh, they removed the Dalek from the case in that part. Derp. Anyway, Ian figured out how to work out the Mark III travel machine, and just in time too because there's a Dalek guarding the door right in front of them. They manage to trick the Dalek and they get try to get Ian out of the machine, but the guard finds out that he's been tripped and they can't get him out. They're forced to leave Ian behind as they still can't get him out and he's magnetized to the floor. Ian however manages to get away in time. They saw a fall and try to warn the, um, but they can't because the window they're trying to speak out of is soundproof. The door is also stuck because of its magnet. How does that even? And the Daleks are on their way to kill them, but Ian, Barbara, and Susan shove a large statue down the elevator shaft as the doctor manages to force the door open. Aladon and the Thal leader argue some more and the Daleks stage an ambush. Ian tells the others to go on ahead while he helps the Thals. Yeah, as someone who's more used to the rebooted version of Doctor Who, it just sort of seems kind of backwards what with the Doctor usually being the one to tell the others to stay out of the way most of the time. The Dalek ambush nearly works but Ian saw the Daleks and warns the Thals. The Daleks do manage to kill the Thal leader, however. Ian and the other Thals manage to escape. Later, a Thal shows the Doctor records of Scarrow's history and some star charts to help him figure out where they are. Scarrow's name is mentioned for the first time ever here. Ian tries to convince Aladon, who is now the leader of the Thals, to fight against the Daleks, but the Thals are too pacifistic now. They learned that the Thals actually looked very different, but the Dals resembled the Daleks, which is probably also why they thought the Daleks were at once the Dals. This also explains why the Daleks called the Thals mutants, because they looked very different back then. Convinced that they couldn't get the Thals to fight, our heroes are about to go back to the TARDIS, but Ian reveals the Daleks stole the fluid link. Why? Did he not say so sooner? I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut this review short there as it's getting a bit lengthy at this point and more stuff is happening in each episode so it's time for my final thoughts. First of all I have to say the first episode was actually filmed twice the original version having been lost forever. Well, we're very lucky to have the full serial preserved at all, as the BBC was going to junk the whole thing. But the collector managed to save it just in time. It also apparently managed to convince the archive department of BBC to stop tossing out older material altogether. This is a Wikipedia article, so I don't know how true that is. 
However, by then several episodes had already been lost. There's a restoration go project going on or something, however most of the lost episodes would have to be made into audio dramas at best. Or scripts. I have no strong feelings for this serial. It might have been called the Daleks, but the Daleks weren't exactly very prominent for the vast majority of the serial. I think a better name would have been The Last Children of the Falls or something like that. Most classic Doctor Who serials do have alternate names, but the Dead Planet named after the first episode and the Mutants just don't work for me either. Uh, I can't give this a number rating. I'm just going to give it a rating of it was okay. Now then, I think the fight back outside of the mindscape is reaching its climax. No one cares. The doctor will fail. Doctor, you done? I can't take control of the cyber aid, but I can jam the signal. Do it. Done. I do not know where I am or what I am doing here, but I will continue my primary mission. You there, you are not compatible. You will be deleted. Doctor, I don't think that helped much. I told you, the doctor will fail. I really don't think that's what you meant at all. I found where the dog box are transmitted from. I'm transmitting the Cybermen. Place a dampening field over the earth after I do. Got it. This is not over. Master will. So, have you figured out who sent them? Yes, I think I have. They referred to their master as Master, but I don't think it's just Master. I think it's THE Master. But there's not enough evidence. Actually, there's one thing I've noticed. The cyber leader tried to say their master's name, but got shot. I don't think they're allowed to say the master. He has been awfully quiet since I last saw him, when he aged up Twilight and put her in that place outside of time and space with Cloud Ace. Ah yes, your little crossover adventure with the Ace Wings found on Us Dr. Tubes and Ice Wings Archives tumblers. Well, we'll get to the bottom of this next time. Until then, stay tuned.